You're listening to The Psychonauts, brought to you by WMCO. And for the next little while, I'm your host, the man who's double trouble, because I can do two things at once, the man who always has a change of habit whenever the women are around, the man who is wild in the country just to pass the time. I'm James Manic Glitch Ronovich. So stay tuned into WMCO, because the main message of this show is, if you want to make sense out of this program, you've got to give it your undivided attention. So we had this great big music event thing going on earlier this week, and each of us took part in setting things up. And it was Ernie's job to go pick up the snacks. So when he got back from the supermarket, he started telling everybody that he saw the ghost of Elvis Presley in the Chinese food section. And of course, nobody believed him. Now, I guess you could say that we had our suspicious minds about the whole incident. But we all figured some spirits quite possibly could have been involved, more likely on his breath. But then he remembered he wasn't in the Chinese food section. It was in the delicatessen. Then suddenly the story took on an eerie ring of truth to it. It's time for Teen Talk, that part of the show which is aimed at talking to you teenagers. You know, a lot of people my age are not really big on the whole rap music thing. They say it isn't even music. It's not even poetry. It's just a bunch of folks getting revenge on the English language by using it on a set of drums. And the rappers have strange names like Ice Bucket or Zap Zipper. But me? I like rap music. Because you don't need any talent, see? This is something I could do. Yeah, I can point different combinations of my fingers at the camera while chanting dirty limericks to a metronome. I can add some underdressed groupies in the background who are feeling their bodies like they're checking themselves for moles. Edit it so fast that small animals have seizures and call myself Ice Glitch or Master Manic Def Jam or XQZ Me. I could be huge. Not good, but huge. It's that time of the show again, in which we delve into the middle age mentality in honor of WMCO celebrating its 50th year of being on the air. This is Midlife Mancers. I want to talk to you older guys out there. Hear any radio stations you like recently? Stations that play music you can identify with. Well, unfortunately there aren't any. It's all yakety yak, news, talk shows, new age music these days. Doesn't it make you wonder what happened to your music? Where'd it go? Where did the music go that defined your generation? Well, I know where it went. And it's good news for a change. That music is sitting in the clearance bin down at the antique store. Right next to the unraveled 8-track cassettes and broken records. But it's good music. With words you can hear and understand. Words that tell a story without a video where women sing songs about men and men sing songs about women and surfing and hot rods. Now I know it's depressing to see the music of your generation considered an antique, but on the bright side, isn't it great when the truly rewarding things in life are geared towards a retired senior citizen's income? Remember, it might not be smart or correct, but it's one of the things that makes us what we are. This has been Midlife Mancers, a part of Psychonauts, right here on WMCO. This is that part of the show in which I ask you to let me count the ways. Now, you know, I was uh, going through the channels the other day, and I came across one of the channels that plays uh, music videos. And it seemed to me like there was something wrong with the picture. I mean, it seemed to change 48 times a second, you know, enough to give small animals seizures. I thought maybe you needed a descrambler attachment. Uh, Anyway, I ended up watching for about 20 minutes, and it looked like the camera was attached to one of the machines they used to shake up the paint down at the hardware store. 
But I got to the point that I understood that music videos seem to really only need three things. Number one, female background dancers. Number two, a guy standing in a pile of rubble. Number three, and probably the most popular, people fighting. I also got to the point where I could identify the different styles of music videos. For country, you'd get a guy sitting on a horse and a woman sitting on a fence. For heavy metal, you'd get a guy in a burnout factory. And if it's rap, well, it's going to be a guy in front of a brick wall yelling. It's the mailbag part of the program in which I respond to listener mail. Today's listener writes, Dear Manic, my husband whistles all the time, on purpose. He certainly enjoys it, but nobody else does. I mean, I've even noticed birds laughing at him. How can I get him to desist? Is our polite way of saying, Dear, stop whistling, or I'll have to stamp your lips to your eyebrows. Signed, Achy Breaky Ears. Well, let's see, this is a real odd one, because whistling is usually a sign of happiness. But, to stop a guy from whistling, uh, maybe change his diet. You know, why don't you stuff his face full of crackers? That might slow him down a bit. You know, I'm thinking, if you can't get this guy to stop listening, maybe you need to spend a little bit of time away from each other. Maybe send your husband off on a holiday all by himself. Send him off to go annoy his parents, you know, Whistler's mother. But ultimately, when you're dealing with a husband and a wife, if you can't get him to go your way, maybe you need to change your attitude a little bit. Think about it this way. As long as he's whistling, he's not smoking, he's not drinking, and he's not eating. And you know where he is. But maybe it's the lady's fault. Maybe she's given him too much to whistle about. Well, so anyway, we got on with the party, but then suddenly the room got real cold, and we all thought that the women had shown up. But it was the ghost of Elvis again. I guess some ghosts can go through walls, and other ghosts can go through, uh, I don't know, menopause, I guess. But the ghost kind of went into Ernie's body and kind of seemed to possess him. Started dancing around, moving his hips like he was looking for a girl. As opposed to something like, you know, like a toilet bowl or something. Usually he has trouble finding either, but this was just the beginning of the weirdness. In this part of the show called Truth or Consequences, I'm going to show you how to make up the truth so you won't have to face the consequences. You know, one of my friends told me he was listening to the radio the other day, and, well, they played their song. You know, the song they were playing when him and his wife first met. You know, it's funny how sometimes a song can define a relationship. Like, Louis' song is Alone Again. And now Britt and Lucille's song is Who's Sorry Now. But for my friend Earl's, it's Blue Birds Over the Mountain by the great Ursel Hickey. So I went to listen to it, but, you know, the one I found was by some cover band. What's with that? It wasn't Ursel Hickey at all. It, it was like a no-name. Now, I think everybody wants a real thing, especially when it comes to hickeys. I mean, why would they redo a perfectly good song, but do it badly? I mean, now, I sometimes do my own version of stuff, like, I may take a couple ping-pong rackets and a weed whacker and make a ceiling fan out of them, but by golly, I would never disrespect a classic musical rendition like Ursel Hickey did in the Bluebirds Over the Mountain. So if there's any musicians out there, for heaven's sake, there will never be another Ursula Hickey. Get over it. Start making your own nostalgia and keep your cotton picking hands off other people's. Thank you very much. It's that time of the show again, in which we delve into the middle age mentality in honor of WMCO celebrating its 50th year of being on the air. This is Midlife Mancers. I want to talk to you older guys about your busy schedule. I'm guessing you're spending a big part of the day yelling at the teenagers to turn the darn music down. I bet you can't believe it because about 20, 30 years ago, remember, you used to love having your music loud and all of a sudden you can't stand their music that loud. 
And then when you realize your hearing is off by about 40%, imagine how loud it really is. But let's be honest here. Volume is not the problem. Like something's loud. Your car exhaust, matlock, young women saying how good you look for a man with your lifestyle. The truth is, you don't like the new music loud because, well, you don't like the new music period. So stop yelling at the kids to turn it down. Start yelling at them to turn the darn stuff off. Remember, it might not be smart or correct, but it's one of the things that makes us what we are. This has been Midlife Mansers, a part of Psychonauts, right here on WMCO. Well, after Ernie was possessed by the ghost of Elvis, it kind of changed his personality. Or I should say, it got him a personality. He duct taped rhinestones all over his plaid shirt, and his hunting vest, and even his tent. He started going around saying, I thank you very much. He put on lots of weight, shot his TV, and started eating nothing but peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Even got that little lip curl thing going on, like he'd just eaten an entire grapefruit. He dipped his work boots in blue paint and cut off the roof of his van, then painted that pink. It got real bad, he was eventually sent to Graceland for a little stay. Yeah, St. Mary's Graceland Insane Asylum. But, you know, to be honest, the other patients really seemed to enjoy it while he was there, you know, singing songs like Heartbreak Asylum, Don't Be Crazy, and even Looney Ben Rock. But I guess the good news is that Ernie has left the cuckoo bin. <laughs> 